So let's talk about these pieces of atoms. Uh, protons and neutrons are very similar in mass. And the electrons are much smaller. They have an almost negligible mass. Because protons and neutrons are so tiny, uh, the gram or the kilogram is not a useful unit to measure their mass. Here in this table, um, we see that the mass of the proton is 1.67262 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. We like to have a unit that is roughly the same size as what we're measuring. So kilograms is not going to work. Even picograms are not going to work. So we came up with a new unit. Uh, they were very creative when they named it atomic mass unit. Mm -hmm. It's a unit of mass for measuring the mass of atoms, right? Atomic mass unit. The abbreviation is, is AMU, not AMU, some cousin of an EMU. It's AMU. So a proton in atomic mass units has a mass of 1.0073. For our purposes, you can think of that as one. A proton has a mass of one atomic mass unit. A neutron has a mass of about one atomic mass unit. The difference in mass between them is very small. Sometimes it matters, but most of our calculations, it will not matter at all. And then here's the electron. It has a much smaller mass. In atomic mass units, which are easier to look at, it's 0.00055. It's like 1,800 times smaller. So most calculations, it's not going to matter. So we need to have an understanding of the relative masses of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are one, electron essentially zero. And the charges, the proton is positive. Protons are positive, they both start with P. Neutrons are neutral, okay? No charge on the neutrons. And then the electron is the negative one. So protons are plus one in charge, electrons are minus one in charge. Relative size. If the proton was the size and mass of a baseball, the electron would have the mass of a grain of rice. So really just not significant in terms of mass. So if the atom is mostly empty space, how come matter seems solid? Well, it seems solid because the variation in density is on a scale that's too small for our eyes to see. This is a picture of scaffolding. To me, it looks like a jungle gym, right? If you look at this close up, here are the metal bars, but most of this structure is empty space, isn't it? But when you back up and look at it from a distance, it looks solid. Because as you back up, the variations are small based on what you're seeing. The variations are too small to detect. And so that's what's going on with seemingly solid matter. The variations between the dense nucleus and the almost empty outer part of the atom are so small that we can't detect them. Almost done here. We need to have a basic idea of the properties of electrical charge. Um, electrical charge is a fundamental property of protons and electrons. Protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge. Electrical charge is similar to magnetic fields. We've all played with magnets. We know that a magnet will stick to the refrigerator, unless it's a stainless steel refrigerator. It'll stick to the refrigerator, right? There's this force of attraction. But if you take two north poles of magnets and try to put them together, they repel each other. So just like magnets, opposite charges will attract each other and like charges will repel. So two positives are going to push away from each other, two negatives push away from each other. But if you have a positive and a negative, they'll stick together. And the charges will neutralize each other or cancel out. If you have a positive charge, a positive one, and a negative one charge, they're going to be attracted to each other, they'll stick together, but then overall, this little unit has no charge. We say it's charge neutral. And that's what happens with the positive and negative charges inside the atom.